Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This week we're doing vertical uphill welding. In the last segment of this series, we just did a whole bunch of beads on T-joints and by taking three pieces of metal and tacking them back to back, we get four T-joints and that's a whole lot of practice. So last in the last video, we laid them down on the table and did just a whole bunch of horizontal T-joints. Let's do a little quick review on last week's video. That was MIG Welding Basics Part 6 T-joint drill. If you haven't seen it yet, you can easily find it on YouTube. Did the root pass, second pass, and then third pass here. And I pulled all the beads just because that's generally my preference for short circuit MIG. Lots of opinions on that, but I cut, polished, and etched it here at the request of one of my forum members, Jonathan Lewis. And uh, you can see it got into the root and didn't really have any problems. Well, now we're going vertical uphill and we're going to do the same thing. Three pieces of metal, four T-joints, multiple passes on each side. That gives us a whole lot of practice with a little bit of metal and very little prep time. All right, so I'm using this weld test stand uh, provided to me by Triangle Engineering. And also, I'm going to be doing lots of different joints on this thing in lots of different positions. They provide test plates that are already pre-beveled, saw cut, traceability, heat numbers on them. I'm going to be using these test plates in future videos for doing 3G, 4G tests using backing strips like a common structural welding test, 3G, 4G. Then also, also going to be doing some 6G, some more 6G with these 2 inch Schedule 80 coupons. And this, this positioner, this weld test stand here, will let me do 6G, also will let me pipe in a purge for 309 root passes. So I got a lot of things planned for this thing. So thanks Triangle Engineering again. You can go check their stuff out at trieng.com. So that's T R I E N G.com. And the reason this the reason this is so helpful is cuz right from here I'm going on to overhead. And so when I do that, all I, all I have to do is loosen this up. Raise that up and then loosen the where I've got the piece and put this up overhead and bada bing so all right enough talking let's get to the welding all right, one of the important things in a vertical t-joint like this is positioning it where you can see the whole thing where your nozzle doesn't get in your way toward the top of the weld so you want to kind of position it low enough so that you can see the whole thing easily and I'm just using an upside down V technique well later on it will show you another technique but this is the first one here just an upside down V where I'm tracing the front edge of the puddle keeping a nice short stick out. It looks something like this if you were to draw it out as a pattern. So keeping a short stick out is a key because you'll have a tendency on vertical wells to not only lean the gun back too much but also use too long of a stick out so that you can see the puddle better. But a short stick out is very important to get the adequate amount of arc force to make the puddle lay down flat and make it penetrate adequately. And again tracing the front edge of the puddle to keep that arc on the leading edge. Okay, well that's that technique. Let's take a look at the uh, second technique now, and that's kind of a series of triangles, where basically where you're tracing the front of the puddle, but then you're just coming across in the back of the puddle very quickly, but you still are keeping the arc to uh, biting in on the leading edge of the puddle, and that is key. Now you may have noticed in the previous point, I'm going I'm going clockwise here, and in the other shots where I'm farther back, I'm going counterclockwise, but it doesn't really, really doesn't make a difference uh, except on lap joints, it makes a little difference, and when we get to lap joints, we'll talk about that. But you can see I'm tracing it, I'm just making, a, it's almost like circles, but it's more like a triangle because that's the shape that keeps the arc in the leading edge of the puddle. And that's the finished bead there. Now we're going to go ahead and stack beads on top of that. Starting on the right hand side here, I'm just going to try to center up on the edge of the weld, also called the toe of the weld. Where the, where the weld metal meets the base metal basically. And now I'm just kind of tracing the front of the puddle, just kind of doing a little bit of a arc, a little bit of a rainbow type motion because that's kind of how the front of the puddle is shaped. Not spending a lot of time across the middle, just pausing very briefly on the edges and try to, try to move on to prevent metal from building up too much. Looks something like this. Just using just enough oscillation to help the bead lay down a little bit flat. MIG welding is going to have a tendency to pile up going vertical uphill like this. So by doing just a little bit of manipulation, you can kind of help yourself out and get it to lay a little bit flatter. Again, this is what I do on subsequent beads. Uh, just a little bit of a side-to-side -side motion with a, a little rainbow arc that traces the front of the puddle. I'm sure there are other ways that work. 
for the second pass. I'm going to try to meet that bead halfway and then tie into the base metal on the other side. And again, I'm pausing briefly. This bead goes generally a little bit slower because now I've got a little bit of a trough to fill in and I'm not, I'm not so worried about it piling up because I've got something for it to bite on in the crown of the other bead. So you can see the travel speed is a little bit slower, but same thing applies. Keep a short stick out and try not to use too much gun angle. Don't spend a lot of time across the middle, but don't jump. Don't ever get out of the puddle. All right, that's two beads there, and the, 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 the next three beads stacked over top of that. Same technique, so we'll kind of uh, try to trim out a little bit and speed that up, but I will show you how that looks here in just a second. All right, you can see I'm doing the same exact thing. I'm just trying to center up on the very edge of, the, of that bead on the right-hand side. Just doing a little bit of a rainbow type technique. And then the second bead, I'm doing the same exact thing, but again, I've got a little bit of an area to fill now, so the travel speed slows down just a little bit. And then for the third bead, kind of the same thing. I want to take really keep an eye on the left-hand side so as not to leave any undercuts. So I'll pause there for just a half a second or so. And the finished product with three beads on there looks like that. Also, you may want to do some practice on a Z-weave. Instead of stacking, stacking really narrow weaves in there, just do a Z-weave like this. This is, a, this is something you may be called upon to do one day as well, especially on like a 5G pipe joint which is kind of rare to be doing MIG welded pipe joints, but fab shops do it. Kind of rare to do it in the field or in construction, but fab shops definitely take advantage of it. I've seen it done anyway. Also seen it done in automated uh, application. But here you're just pausing on those toes of the weld and kind of zipping across the middle pretty quickly and trying not to pile up too much. Okay, well that is it for this week. If you like what you see here hit that subscribe button to subscribe for more also visit the store by clicking the visit the store button or go to weldmonger.com and uh, we'll see you next time thanks a lot for watching